Good morning, guten Tag. How Good are you? Good uh, morning. Nice to see morning. you everyone morning, here everybody. for this uh, first virtual uh, meetup at uh, European Gaming, the European Gaming Q1 meetup. Uh, as you can see, we are still doing this virtually. It has proved to be a huge success. Hopefully, it will also be in person uh, soon. But nevertheless, uh, we have to take advantage of uh, this situation uh, to have all these experts tuning in from all around the world and also give the opportunity for our viewers from multiple continents to attend this event. Uh, for the first panel, uh, it's not the traditional Sprechen Sie Deutsch panel. Uh, this time is not the Dach panel. It's uh, a, a, an outlook on Europe and uh, what better way uh, to kickstart this uh, year than talking about the most trending uh, new jurisdictions we can call uh, Germany and Austria. So for this uh, session, uh, we have a, a non-German moderator actually from the Baltics who understands the industry very well. Uh, Andrius, it's nice to see you and I leave you to it. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you, thank you Zoltan. And uh, good morning, everybody. Morning. Uh, so uh, let's let's kick off uh, the Austrian and German panel. I'm the yeah, as 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 pointed out, I'm the only non-German speaking person here. So, but I think I think that's that's better for the for the audience. Um, okay, so uh, today I have with me uh, Dr. Uh, Jörg Hoffman, who's a, a partner at Merkes Law. Uh, Robert Lenzhofer, who is a co-founder and the CEO of Hola Games, and uh, Thomas Forstner, the Secretary General of the OVWG. Uh, I, will, I would like to start with uh, uh, Austria uh, and with uh, Thomas Forstner, and of course me myself, I'm Andrus Gabnis, I'm an international gambling lawyer, I will be the moderator for the first panel, only for the first panel. So, um, Thomas, you have recently uh, took over the position of the uh, Secretary General of the OVWG. Yes. I would like actually to ask you to briefly introduce yourself and the organization you're representing, because uh, if someone is not up to speed of, you know, your uh, organization, who you know, which is uh, really active in the in the gambling. Uh, regulatory uh, arena to call like that. <laughs> so it would be really nice uh, to, to understand basically what your organization really does in Austria. And then we will turn to the, to the regulatory framework, which is obviously, you know, these both, both countries are neighboring countries and related countries and German speaking countries. However, the gambling regulatory framework is not is really not the same. So <laughs> so let's uh, let's start with Austria and with Thomas. And thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to be at this panel and I'm new in this business, I know. Uh, but I, anyway, I'm trying to give you an, an some, some updates to the Austrian situation at the moment. Um, the, OV, the OVVG is uh, an organization representing the online operators in Austria. Uh, you might know we have a problem here because we have still the monopoly. We'll get to that point later again. Mm -hmm. And we are fighting against this monopoly for years, I think. Uh, we have a I think you, you will get it within the, 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 the points. So maybe I'll start and give you a view about the situation about the Austrian gambling law, if it's okay for you. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, you, you maybe might have noticed that we had uh, some young, unusually frequent changes of the government. Uh, so it's not easy to predict what's going on in Austria until the next national elections, uh, which should take place in 2024. Fact is, uh, we, we get in new information from leaked phones almost daily, and we don't know yet if the current government will last that long. So, what is the situation? Sport betting and gambling are still treated differently in Austria in terms of both regulation and taxation. And as I mentioned, we still 
have no fair licensing system, but we have a monopoly instead. So in February 2021, there was a presentation to the Council of Ministers held by the former finance minister Blümel, who announced a reorganization of the gambling law in Austria. Sounds good. So what did he, what, what did he mean and what are the main points? Let's take a, let's take a look. Uh, the first thing was the creation of an independent gambling authority. Sounds good. A cross-operator blocking file uh, called Sperrverbund for players. This is something like an Austrian-wide self-execution file. I think uh, Jörg will tell us about Germany later how it works. Uh, what else is in the in the agenda? Uh, DNS blocking of illegal operators, and illegal means no license in Austria. But we have a monopoly, so you don't get license. You don't get a license anyway. Uh, blacklisting of illegal operators, a restriction of slots, uh, a restriction of gambling advertising similar to tobacco advertising, a ban on video lottery terminals, VLDs throughout Austria, uh, new regulations on loot boxes, and the cancellation of the three casino licenses that have not yet been awarded. Okay. So it was a big package. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the implementation of this new law should take place by autumn 2021. Now we have February 2022 and nothing yet happened. So we are still waiting for a legal regulation on the online mar market. Okay, so, so uh, uh, and none of these measures are in place currently. For instance, the, the, the blacklisting of the operators is not in place in Austria currently. Nothing happened yet. Okay. So we have still a, a situation where we don't know what, it, what, what is the legal framework, what's going to be tomorrow, and it's not very satisfying. Okay, understood. So, so yeah, so the current situation, as far as I understand, it's only the plans based and the, the government changed. So basically, we have no new plans or, 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 or clear, clear plans for, for, for the you know, upcoming future. Uh, okay, but we still have the current situation in general. So what's happening in Austria? Um, what are the biggest issues, let's say, currently, apart from the fact that uh, you have, we have the, the, the monopoly. Uh, so what's the general feeling there in terms of both uh, betting and, and, and casino? Betting is, is regulated, this is working, but online gambling is still not working, as I told you. Uh, we have a big, well, let's call it problem, uh, with the topic of player complaints. This is a, um, this is a big point. Um, it's, it has recently become more frequent in Austria. Um, there are currently more than 1,500 several cases pending. So why is this so? Because uh, the, lit the litigation financiers are still advertising that players will get their lost money back okay. without any risk, you know? So in return, they demand up to 40% participation. And they argue that the online gambling operators do not have a legal license under the Austrian yeah. Gaming Act. That's what I told you. So although they are fully licensed in other member states, they have not accepted yet. So this effect is the, that the Austrian courts continue to refrain from conducting an independent examination required for the justification of the Austrian gambling monopoly. They merely refer to an old Supreme Court, I think it's from 2016, and according to which the Austrian gambling monopoly was deemed to be in conformity with EU law. So a new examination does not, play, does not take place. So the national, we, we think, so our opinion is the national courts thus do not undertake the necessary uh, examinations and thus persistently oppose the case law of the Court of Justice of the European Union. So we don't like it at all. <laughs> so the Austrian courts do not offer legal protection to the operators. So the EU Commission uh, must now once again deal with the Austrian gambling monopoly. That's why we wrote the complaint. Uh, it's titled 
complaint to the European Commission concerning infringement by the Republic of Austria of the freedom to provide services and the right to fair hearing. Uh, we sent this complaint to DigiGrow in January, and we are now looking for the next steps, what's happening. Okay, understood. So, so um, yeah, be because it, 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 these these uh, let's say complaints from the, the the claims from from the from the players it's not something new basically it's not the first year and not even the second year of of these things happening so your organization is really active in this in this part in the, in, in this in this fight so uh, is you know, do you do you feel uh, that you know the the, the international operators would would start to refrain of uh, uh, catering the, the players uh, in Austria only because of these, you know, increasing uh, claims or, or, or already, you know, the pile of these claims in Austria. What, what do you, you know, generally feel? Are the, 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 the international operators tired of this situation and they, they, they start to uh, move away from, from, from Austria or, or you know, uh, the, the status quo is there for a bit of time, and you feel that it's you know going to last until until some 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 changes in the regulatory framework will appear. Well, I think they are they are waiting. Uh, they are they are sitting and waiting, and they get nervous. I guess that's what I do. So we are we are looking forward uh, to to get a decision because you know it's it's. It's a situation which is not satisfying for anybody, not for the Republic, not, not for the gamblers, not for the companies. Uh, you know, all the our members, they are paying taxes, you know, they, they have a lot of stuff here. Uh, they do all the things they got to do, but they don't have a legal framework to do so. So we, we are looking forward that the commission uh, reacts to our complaint. And that we get a clearance here. Okay, okay, understood. So basically, the the situation from what I from from what I'm hearing is more or less unchanged from 2021 uh, in terms of the general the general atmosphere in 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 in, in, in Austria. So uh, you know, you're you're from the inside. What do you think? What's going to happen this year? Is, will there be any? Because you know, you 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 know, you know, you know, as we all do, that the uh, European Commission is not very keen on taking up these you know the, 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 these complaints from the from the national uh, organizations or even the national courts. Uh, you know what? What do you feel? Is there going to be any changes? Any any movement? in Austria this year, or we will more or less move along in the same direction until next year? In procedures every year. No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I hope we got an answer uh, to the complaint within a short period. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we have brought it to DG, I, I told you to teach grow. Uh, we, we are bringing it to DG just to, if it's not working as we want it to work. Uh, and, and of course, we, we are trying to do, do high the pressure. Okay. Pressure, you know? So, so the, last, the last question that I have uh, for you is, um, is your organization a, a membership based? Uh, let's say if, if, if I'm an international uh, uh, operator and I would like uh, I would like, you know, um, to join you or, or, or to be uh, somehow related to, to your organization. What should I do? Uh, you just give me a call <laughs> and until you tell me you want to be a member. Uh, you have to do your business in Austria. You have to um, fulfill some, um, some, some points. That's it. It's quite easy. I give you a list, but you have to do it. Will be, you will be okay. It seems it, it, it really seems easy. So okay. So oh, it's really quite easy. And and the more people uh, joining our, our company our organization, the, the more pressure is possible. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much.
Uh, I will, so if, if anybody has any questions uh, related to the Austrian uh, um, framework, the Austrian, uh, let's say, situation or, or anything, or, or let's say, uh, a number for, <laughs> for, for joining the organization, uh, you can provide, the, uh, uh, pr pr provide the, the question here in the chat, I suppose. Uh, and I would like to move to Germany, uh, up north a bit. And uh, Dr. Jörg Hoffmann, hi once again. I'm really happy to, to, to see you and hear you once again. So um, you're a gambling lawyer with vast experience in gambling uh, industry. Currently, Germany is a really trending topic for, you know, for everybody, for, 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 for the players, for the operators, for the software providers, for everybody, basically, for the public, for the general public. Uh, please provide, you know, your insights, both on the, on the, on the, on the new uh, uh, procedures of the licensing, uh, and then, you know, later we will turn to the, to the general atmosphere. Uh, and I will ask Robert to uh, provide some feedback from, from the industry perspective. So, Jörg, please proceed. Millions. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, happy to provide an overview on what's going on in here in Germany. There's exciting times at the moment, because we're coming from uh, an, uh, an area of total prohibition for online gaming for decades, and now for the first time, as of January 2020, we are making experience with different licensing regimes, starting with uh, licensing for sports betting as of 1st of January 2022, uh, sorry, 2020. And now we are in the middle of a process for applying uh, for um, virtual slot machine licenses as well as uh, online poker. This um, procedure is conducted by a new authority, which is located in Saxony Anhalt, uh, in the city of Halle. And uh, we're expecting first licenses to be granted, well, in the near future, probably by the end of this month or in March, and then uh, followed by uh, um, a few more licenses. At the moment, it's about 50 applicants who are applying for these licenses. And sports betting licenses were granted to already um, 36 operators, big names among them, of course. Interestingly, because we are always in an environment which is based on an interstate treaty. And the new one came into force in July last year. Uh, the one before expired, of course, then by the end of June and first licenses granted uh, were due to expire also by um, 30th of June last year. But the new interstate treaty created a transitional regulation that they will be valid, will, will remain valid until the end of this year, but they need to be reviewed. And it's very important for the industry to realize that they need to submit applications for renewal by the end of April this year. So it's not much time left, but for license holders, it's quite easy to update their own applications because the, the regulator decided and he published a guideline uh, that only those concepts who needed to be amended and adopted to the amendments of the new law needs, needs to be completed. So they can stick to their own concepts, basically. And of course, always there are some documents like criminal records and all these things that do not need to be outdated. Uh, these documents will have to be renewed, sent to the regulator, which is the regional council in Darmstadt. They're very busy in, in uh, progressing all these proceedings. And uh, then these licenses will be renewed for another five years. And I guess uh, that is what keeps us busy at the moment. In parallel, at the same time, there is uh, always a lot of work to be done with the applications for virtual slot machines. More and more operators are making decisions to apply for licenses. Uh, we expected many more to, to be um, on the market, but uh, we need to know that uh, there are so many restrictions in the regulation in Germany. Uh, these are details sometimes. It's uh, deposit limits, state limits, minimum spin duration of five seconds, uh, one, one euro per game uh, as a limit, as a state limit. Uh, you're not allowed to offer any sort of table games, spank code against at Hulek, Baccarat, Blackjack. And to compete with black market operators, that's a real challenge. 
We mm -hmm. realized speaking to suppliers who have that figures about gross, gross gaming revenues, we can estimate we lost gross gaming revenues in the amount of plus minus 70, 80% compared to the, the period of time before these restrictions were to, to be applied. That was a transitional regime which came into force uh, in October 2020, where the operators were obliged to fulfill certain criteria, so-called joint guidelines. These are was an adoption of future law of the current industry treaty. And that, of course, um, uh, meant restricting the own offerings, whereas black market operators offered the full choice to, to, to players. And so we uh, had that sort of channeling people into the wrong direction. The whole regulation is about player protection and channeling the market, but it doesn't work. You can only protect players in that environment where they play and to channelize, meaning from black market to a regulated market. At the moment, it's more the other way around. That's the situation uh, currently in Germany. Okay, so um, just you know, uh, from the very start. Okay, so uh, we have different different frameworks currently in in in, in Germany. One is in place. One is let's say currently uh, moving and, and and rolling rolling right now. So. Um, there are two separate gambling authorities, is that correct? That's correct. One is fairly new. Uh, and in fact, uh, a new one is coming up because uh, the new interstate treaty establishes um, a super um, authority, the joint gaming authority of the German states, of the German lenders. And this authority is being built up at the moment. It okay. will take over. So it's a national, uh, national wide. Yes. And they will, they will be responsible for all the verticals. They will take over uh, as of 1st January next year. At the moment, okay. they're really building it up. They will be responsible for licensing, supervising, enforcement, and everything concerning games for all verticals. Whereas today, we have the responsibility of the regional council in Darmstadt, which is in the state of Hesse for sports betting, and they're really good experience at the moment, but this will expire um, by the end of this year, and then Saxony and I will take over. At the moment, we have also uh, um, an authority in Saxony, Anhalt, but that is got sort of a transitional solution. It's the state, administ state administrative authority. They started from scratch in July last year, and uh, they are conducting these two um, application proceedings for online poker and virtual slots. It's interesting, we, we were not allowed to use the term online casino uh, for that licensing regime, which is slots only. The new term is um, virtual slot machines or virtual slots. Online casino is subject to a specific license, which will not be uh, granted to the, the private market uh, in a way as it is done with virtual slot machines. This is section 22C of the Interstate Treaty, meaning that the 16 states of Germany have a certain discretion to decide whether they want to grant such a license for table games and live streaming of table games to uh, private operators or okay. to the state. And we've got a few states already decided they want to go for the monopoly. So a state owned company can get that license based on a new law, which they have to, to pass, of course. Others, including Schleswig-Holstein and North Rhine Westphalia opted for the free market solution. But then the amount of licenses is limited to the number of existing bricks and mortar licenses Okay. Casino licenses in that particular state. So it will be uh, at the moment it's five in North Rhine Westphalia. Uh, it would be one in Berlin, three in Hesse. It's very, very different because the, the casino laws are specific law and uh, this amount of license is really restricted. So that's um, uh, something, it, it looks weird to me. And it means that at the moment, because there is no license granted and it will take some time, there is no legal opportunity to uh, play roulette in Germany online because there's nobody who could operate this, apart from black market operators, of course. Okay, so um, I, have, I, I have now, you know, a clarifying uh, question. So you were, you, you were speaking about some, some, some limitations in terms of, of, of the game's specifics, the, game, the, game, the game's, you know, the nature of the games and, and stuff. So, um, but the, the framework, the licensing framework is only B2C or B2B as well. And well, it's B2C. We, we don't, uh, we don't uh, have any sort of licenses for uh, suppliers um, or for uh, software providers. Uh, it's just um, the, the operator who needs to apply for a license. 
But um, of course, in this is new, by the way, if you uh, apply for a license to operate virtual slot machines, you also have to apply for a license which seeks permission of every single game. And so far, the games will be permitted and in every single case. Uh, unfortunately, it's not uh, like a whitelist or something else where you can say uh, a game like, let's say, Book of Ra uh, is whitelisted and uh, you simply say, I'm going to offer it. You have to submit your own application for every game, there may be 500. And the regulator okay. will look at, uh, at your list, will review and make a decision. And if a competitor submits the same games, a new revision, a, a new um, uh, proceeding will start, and it's a single decision, a single permission per game. Uh, and if you don't have that, you're not allowed to offer anything because that is something that goes at the same time. So it's it's basically a bit similar to 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 to, to license. It's like not a licensing procedure, but it's still a, a sort of a permit. Uh, the application for the permit to provide these games. Um, yeah, that's right. But the communication is only between the B2C operator and okay. the regulator. And uh, for the B2C business, B2B business, some rules apply, and that's not really written rules. I can tell you that regulators intend to create a requirement for um, software providers. They are not allowed to service to, to serve um, operators who are targeting people in, in, in Germany if they also provide their software to an operator who is not licensed but is also offering his games in Germany. So it's a full compliance regulation uh, that applies to the payment service industry as well to uh, the um, software suppliers. Um, this, this could of course be an issue for the industry. Okay, so um, I, will, I would now like to, to turn to Robert because he's a um, he has you know experience in 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 how it works in, in Germany from the industry perspective and he um, he represents the B two B business um, so yeah so first of all please please introduce your your business basically yourself and and your business and please provide you know your your um, I don't want I don't want to call you know struggles but <laughs> you know the, the 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 things that you feel you know that are maybe um, that that basically the audience should know uh, prior to, to, to going for Germany from the industry perspective. Yeah, I'm, yeah, um, I'm in the industry since 20 years now. I'm actually also Austrian. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> um, um, uh, I grew up in Vienna, uh, but uh, last 10 years in, in, in Berlin or around Berlin. And um, I always was in the product uh, area uh, of iGaming. So I always developed products in sports betting, in poker, in bingo, in casino, and um, touched all kinds of areas, also play account management. And Hurley Games, uh, we, we founded last uh, year, uh, the, actually 2022, uh, the year before last year, so uh, September 2020, uh, we, we founded Hurley Games. Basically, um, um, what we know from other jurisdictions uh, all over Europe, whenever there is a tectonic shift and the new regulation is obviously a tectonic shift, um, there's always uh, you know opportunities. And the regulation didn't look uh, too, too good in the beginning. Um, you know, this is uh, limitations of one euro and five seconds, everybody knows uh, by now. But as a small sort of a studio who starts in and leans into the regulation has, you know, an advantage um, to like be fully focused. And although we are small, um, we are kind of bigger than, you know, like other large suppliers who you know don't have a focus on Germany, so to say, yes. and um, so so we I think what we saw from a lot of operators and and for us it and suppliers for us it's, it was a little bit positive. Everybody looked somewhere else currently. Everybody looked uh, to the US or Holland or other markets, which were sort of more interesting on uh, the short term or mid term. Um, and um, so and and so it was a, it's a good opportunity for us to lean into the market to really read every sentence of the regulation and become experts in the regulation and also an execution of how games should be developed and um and um i think maybe interesting to know because it's quite it's quite new i mean everybody knows about the one euro and five seconds and so on but quite new it came out a five days ago or so um, um you find it on the homepage of um um 
um, Saxony Anhalt. Uh, so it's not that that funny enough. That article isn't yet on the official website of the regulators. So they're they're still ramping up their communication efforts. Is is a small detail, but it's interesting. Like it gives you an indication of of actually how, and I see this quite positive, how detailed the the, the current people in play um, are, are going. So there was a, there was an FAQ added um, to a um, Merkblatt or info sheet called. Um, um, Merkblatt erlaubnis or specification of virtual slot machines. And they ask, for instance, uh, some operators asked, and I've been asked as well, and I was also the view that it's compliant, but it's now clarified about gamble games, for instance. It's very, very typical German mechanic that um, when after or during uh, the game round, uh, when you have won something that you can gamble in the card or leather gamble game. There was a bit of debate because you know some suppliers implemented it as a separate bet, which you can't do because then you're breaking the max stake rule uh, quite easily of one euro. Um, and there was a bit of debate whether you know that that's actually allowed or not because it wasn't explicitly stated that it is allowed. And I find it quite positive that we get more and more uh, mostly confirming um, statements um, from these um, info sheets about what you would interpret if you, you know, read the regulation properly in terms of uh, supplying games. So that was quite interesting to see, and also interesting to see how detailed they go. They don't just say yes, it's allowed, but they state like how you have to um, uh, define it in the rules. You have to define the rules. I know suppliers who just don't explain this in the rules. Um, you have to. Um, also define in the gamble games what is the RTP of the gamble game itself, typically 100% or 50-50. In the card gamble, you know, red, black, um, but still you have to define it in the rules. And there's also, like, they go really detailed, and I, I quite liked it because obviously we we comply with these rules, so um, compliance is fun when you comply, compliance is not fun when you're not <laughs> yet there. Um, um, like, things like that, you cannot um, give the perception of skill or skill or perception of skill, and you cannot provide, a, like, a perception of different degrees of probability visually and implicitly um, by, by gameplay. And my view is some very popular suppliers will have an, probably an issue there. Um, so that, that's quite interesting and positive. So I, I advise everybody to look, like you really need to look for those or, or you can look on my LinkedIn. I always make a, a write-up about these things. Uh, but you have to look at those websites. It's, it's a little bit fragmented and distributed. It's all in German. And often these German sentences I have to read um, 20 times to make sure I completely understand them. But I think the positive is um, people people have asked me like a few times, like, well, it's changing all the time. And, you know, there's like, you know, this has changed and this has changed. I'm like, actually not much has changed. We have two major things, which is the law and the tax. And from there we have, you know, the Merck, Letter, uh, the info sheets are clarifications and details where um, they have specified, you know, th things I would have guessed to be true and and, uh, and expected to be true and specified. But coming to the fact of um, what we just talked about about uh, granting a sort of granting a game, or I don't know how the process should be called. Like a, a game is is allowed to yeah, be launched per by permitting, operator. like a permitting a, a, a game to, to permitting. To and that's that's quite different and quite quite an I think quite an an issue. I, I think the operators are solving, but the regulators should, really should have solved. Not necessarily. Um, with a, you, you can do a B two B regime. That's fine. But at least um, you need to um, um, uh, ask the suppliers to. Uh, provide game certificates because right now <clears throat> all I've been asked for we, we did more but I've been asked for um, um, is the RNG certificate now what I I think this sort of permitting is and the way I read the FAQs and the way I understand the questions which are coming in it's a it's a few on the surface basically you look at the game you click oh it's one euro and five seconds However, there's a lot of details in game development. Um, there's a lot of security topics uh, in game development um, where, which is not checked, basically. So at the moment, um, and, and, and as, as far as I know, all the, all the operators still ask for game certificates, which is good, but it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a weird situation where the operators step in and take, you know, basically do part of the job of what the regulator should do. So that's that's really, really missing. However, it's solved. I'm sure it will be solved because it, that can stand. Because in theory, at least at the moment in theory, uh, you can launch a game without a certificate, essentially. Um, and that means you can, you know, they don't know. Um, you can't control 
like whether the RTP is verbal or not. Obviously, we're talking about um, um, bad intent here, um, but you can't control, um, there's no source code review or anything like this, which is typically done by these testing houses. Um, yes, there is no... Yeah, yeah, that that is exactly the question I, I wanted to ask because you know, uh, in, in 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 standard in standard situation, you provide you know the the set of requirements for the gaming lab for them to to basically you know run through and yeah. confirm like you know check 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 and that's it. So if if the if the certificate is only RNG RNG is the RNG that's that's it. So so uh, but so now in terms of and. And if you if you just told that there's a, a new requirement or a clarification of a requirement which has been published only five days ago, so maybe basically it's it's a bit of a dif uh, difficult job even for the labs to so you know to, to to know exactly what certificate should state or not. So. Well, you know, I think once I would guess, once you open up the conversation with testing labs, I think the testing labs would all ask all the questions and just give the regulator a big, a big fat questionnaire of the things uh, which need to be tested. And basically, they've done it in all kinds of jurisdictions. And if you take a, a minimum level, and the minimum level is very high, yeah? like um, Moita or UK, for instance, as a minimum level, and you say, well, you know, all these standard things which we are used to as a B2B industry um, need to be done like you know you need to do a full-on simulation you need to do a source code review you need to do you know um, um making sure that every single detail not just the five seconds one euro and the rtp but everything in detail in the game rules is accurate to the customer so the testing houses do a lot of job they even go a little bit further they're not just testing per se um, functionality and compliance, but uh, not not just compliance, but also functionality, uh, because that's also part of so customer trust and uh, customer delivery and and compliance to the degree if you want, because a broken game shouldn't be delivered. Um, so, and I think if if the process would start that they engage with GLI, IT Labs, and the likes, um, um, they would be educated heavily on very quickly on 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 what's typically in Sweden, in the UK, in Denmark, in, in everywhere, Italy, everywhere, basically. Okay, uh, understood. So, so uh, now I would like to basically join uh, uh, Jorg and you uh, in terms of, of, of um, what Jorg already uh, said about the games being launched with the unlicensed and licensed operators in Germany and, and the, 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 you know, the problematics of this part is that you know a self-declaratory thing or they do the uh, investigation and require the operator to switch off the, the the game you know game supplier or they reach out to the gaming supplier to say that look okay so you're you're providing both to the licensed and unlicensed operators you should stop that uh, uh Jörg, can you can you um provide feedback on on this portion of the B2C, of the, of the games, basically, of the B2C, B2B and B2C part. Yes, I mean, this is just part of sort of an enforcement concept. Okay. Um, if a market is quite restricted as it is in Germany, uh, regulation needs to protect the compliant player, the compliant uh, operators, of course, meaning uh, they should combat the black market. And uh, here, there are certain tools which they like to apply. One, of course, is payment blocking. The uh, Minister of the Interior in uh, Lower Saxony is responsible to do this. And just to give you an idea, in a certain way, it works because they are creating blacklists individually for uh, every payment service provider, which logo or label they could find somewhere uh, with uh, unlicensed operators on the website, putting these blacklists together and saying, we found your name on that site. Are you progressing transactions? If so, please stop it. And you can review and make decisions and of course comply. Uh, that happened in August, September last year and ongoing. And the second one is uh, you're going after um, the service providers, the software suppliers, and tell them, well, uh, if you also um, license your software to an operator who is unlicensed in Germany, but servicing customers here, we will simply block your games. So they will then um, certainly not allow uh, these games to be offered 
probably it's a blacklist or whatever. And if I got a permission for such a game, I will lose it, of course. And that makes it uh, hard not to comply because they certainly want to do business in Germany. Um, that is one of these challenges. In my view, it's okay to start protecting the industry this way, but the better way would be to change uh, the regulatory environment to make the, um, the market conditions competitive for operators. So you do not fight the, the black market, which is an endless fight, of course. And if one payment service provider or one content provider stops making business with these with these operators, somebody else will take over the business and, and do it. So we can't get rid of them. And so far, we need to make it more attractive for players to play inside the legal and regulated environment. Uh, that means less restrictions and the taxation. You mentioned that before. We've got 5%, 5.3% nominative tax rate on stakes for online casinos that kills the business. You can't be competitive. As a consequence, many of these casinos needed to reduce their RTP, their return to player. But of course, the black market operators don't do that. And yes. as a player, you play, you spend your money there where you've got the, the higher winnings. Um, I think this is something which will take place. An evaluation of the consequences of our regulation uh, shall take place in uh, 2023 for the first time, a couple of years later. I think um, it needs to be done as soon as possible because it makes no sense to lose the market. It makes sense to do some corrections and amendments. It's a situation which we faced in the beginning in Italy. It was a very restrictive regulation when it started. Uh, and, and, and we saw people playing outside of Italy, which was easy. Even they do IP blocking in these days. A couple of years later, the government decided, well, we need to change a few things. And then the numbers really uh, skyrocketed uh, in, the, in the regulated market. And that was because the players came back to the market. I see this happen in Germany, hopefully not too far from now. Uh, but that is something which is very important. Uh, okay. I, 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 yeah, I think, I think it will help. Yeah, I think a challenge will be, and I'm facing this challenge in the last two weeks, just looking at numbers. Um, the challenge will be to figure out how big is the market actually. Um, there is numbers flying around from, you know, um, um, contracted entities um, who, you know, been contracted by big suppliers or big operators to estimate the market size. And then obviously I can talk to my network and sort of get a feel for it and so on. but um, there, there's a few numbers flying around and they they, are, they just don't fit together at the moment. Mm -hmm. So um, the question will be for the regulator, um, and let me outline on the numbers a little bit as well, but the question will be for the regulator, we want change, we want a better regulation, we want some things to be a little bit more relaxed. However, if the regulator looks at their own data, and, and I'll come to that in a second, it's quite, it's quite fascinating, um, then there is no reason to change. So if you look at the number of the GGR um, estimated by the, what is it called, Jörg, in Hessen, the Gemeinsame Glückspiel? Um, the Joint Office. The Joint, joint Office, office of right, the yeah. Regulators, which is adjacent to the Interior, Ministry of the Interior. Right. And they, they estimated the, the, the international market, let's call it, or gray or black, or however you, however you want to call it, to 477 million GGR annually in 2020. Now, um, we can look at tax paid already because the tax is enforced, but nobody has a license yet. So, so obviously everybody adhering to the toleration rules is thinking, well, I got to pay tax as well. Or, it, or maybe there's some people involved who are not adhering to the toleration rules and they're still paying tax because you, know, you don't want to not pay tax in Germany. Now, if you look at the tax paid in the last six months, is a total of 188 million euros. Now, that's only six months. So if you extrapolate to a year, that's around 360 million euros. And if you now say that um, the tax is 5% and roughly all slots are adjusted to 90% RTP, so a 50% margin, let's say, you need to double the 360 million number um, to arrive roughly um, annual market size based on tax paid at roughly 750 million. The numbers varies depending on how you interpret the tax payment. It, but it goes actually more up than, than down. So 750 million is the, is the lower number in this estimation. So, so you have an estimated market size in GGR based on tax. It's a very hard number of 750 million. The joint office uh, 
said um, the size the year before was 477 million. And by that measure, funny enough, uh, we have a uh, we have a, um, a generalization rate of 150 percent, and obviously Jörg and I and everybody knows that that's not quite true. So it'll be interesting to see, and I, I, I struggle to um, see how that works. Is they need to react based on numbers. They need to know. Um, well, you know, we have a generalization rate of only 20 percent. We need to do something, but it, you know, it, um, yeah. So I struggle to see how. They maybe you can ex, ex, expand because that's 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 quite interesting. How in 2023 or so they will look at the numbers and say, yes, we you know we reach a certain generalization, we reached our goals because that's the that's the base, that's the whole idea of the whole law, uh, or we didn't um, because based on the current numbers, um, well you know success to Germany, generalization is 150 percent. Yeah, that's a good point taken, Robert. And, um... I think it's, it's really ridiculous because uh, never trust these official numbers. The uh, assessment base is still not valid. Um, taxation is, is a good point, but taxation can only reflect the industry that pays taxes and uh, the whole black market, maybe the majority of those operators never paid taxes to German market. Probably they are not uh, the, the, the biggest um, stakeholders in the German market, but we need to consider these as well. In my view, uh, same applies to sports betting, when I say with more than 90% of the market applied for licenses and got licenses, that's simply not true. The market is much bigger. There are names which they don't have on the radar. Yeah. So uh, they're talking, talking it up and that makes no sense. And so far, the assessment or the evaluation of the market uh, is endangered to be completely wrong. In my view, what could be a representative assessment base is uh, sort of a compilation of the numbers and the developments uh, you could get from software suppliers, the leading ones, because they exactly know what but what, what, what happens is that usually if you license your software, it's based on gross gaming revenue, at least you will know uh, how high the gross gaming revenue of every uh, contracted operator is. And if you compare the numbers from 2020, first quarter, second quarter, to those of today, you will see that the gap is much higher. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is something which we need to consider. And this is where the music plays. And this is where we can see it's gross gaming revenue related. And when I say that, in my experience, talking to a couple of larger suppliers, my experience is it's really fair to say plus minus 80% of gross gaming revenue are lost. That does not mean that 80% of the players moved outside of the market. It's always the big players, the high rollers. Uh, I think we can say 75 to 80% of the players stand for maybe 20, 25% of the gross gaming revenue and vice versa. 20, 25% of the players stand for 80, 75% of the gross gaming revenue. That's a matter of fact. And this needs to be considered uh, when we assess the market and its development. And again, this is all about gaming player regulation, player protection, player protection, fighting fraud, and keeping things uh, in, in a supervised market that only works if I can reach out to the player. If the player plays outside of that environment, it's worth nothing, let alone taxation. Okay, taxation so is the other killing aspect uh, in terms of competition. It's challenged uh, by way of litigation, too early to make a prediction, the outcome will be. But I think that is a political, political aspect that needs to be considered. Uh, if we want to protect the business against illegal competition, we need to make it competitive. Okay, so um, let's 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 get that a bit straight with the with the you know with the, with the licensing part and with the taxation part because um, for those who, who who are maybe not aware or or, or considering entering or are, you know already in in, in Germany and to, you know for, for 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 the audience to understand the the you know, relationship between the enforcement of the taxation and and the licensing in general so basically you know the, the, a simple question would be can you you know can you be fine with only paying taxes and, and not going for the license if you don't pay your taxes you will be excluded from a licensing regime because you need to uh, submit a, a certificate 
uh, of the um, issued by the tax authorities that you already paid your taxes. If you haven't paid your taxes in the past, and many operators outside of Germany, well, were in, a, in such a situation, because in 2015, when the uh, VIT directive came into force, there were some, some questions about it, whether it's applicable, whether it's against European Union law discriminating, and things like this. So a lot of operators did not pay taxes, but they could then later file voluntary self-declarations. This worked as long as the tax authorities uh, did not have that particular company on their radar. So if you be first, contact the authority, declare your taxes in full and pay them, then it's fine. Uh, your past is clear and clean and you are ready to apply for a license. If not, you can simply forget it. And you also need to notice that's the difference to uh, administrative enforcement. But if you're owing taxes, tax uh, in, uh, evasion is a criminal offense, and that can be enforced, enforced across the European in, in, uh, Union easily. And the liability is with the directors. So it's really a threat to the industry, and it's completely wrong advice not to pay any taxes. And the problem is you have to pay taxes in Germany, even if you have no license. That's not fair, but that is the case. Okay, so, so yeah, so we have a, a situation. Okay, but uh, the retrospective tax, uh, if you know if you're going for the license, so uh, how many years is that for you know the retrospective tax? You know, just to be clear for those who who are unaware, or or there's a you know cool off period of of, of not being uh, uh, compliant, and you know until you are eligible yeah. for the licensing. I think there's no no not really not really um, a limitation period that applies in this particular regard. If you look through the criminal legal uh, angle or perspective, I think you could go back to 10 years or so. Uh, I'm not an expert in, in, in taxation law, that's, my, uh, that's my, my guess. But it doesn't matter whether it's uh, a few months or a couple of years, as long as your taxes are not fully paid, you will be secluded. You'll be excluded from, uh, from the licensing uh, proceeding. Okay, but so that's, there's, there's, ob there's obviously a bit, little bit of a loophole here. If you are a, a dark actor, bad actor to a degree, um, and you have servers somewhere outside of Europe, um, you know, um, and it's, it's a digital product where you don't send out anything. There's no manufactured goods or anything. So only you have the single source of truth. So, you know, um, um, what, what, you know, who can check whether a year of tax is correct or whether a million of tax is correct being paid by that. Obviously going forward, once you're part of that central database, it gets trickier. But currently, that's that's still a loophole, I believe, as well. Okay, so it, it, we we still have seven minutes. So um, uh, yeah, so just you know, to make uh, things a bit more simple, uh, Jörg, if I if I'm an international operator and I have a full suite of everything, betting plus plus you know slots and you know anything. So what are my steps? basically to go to Germany to have my betting plus, okay, so you, you're not allowed to call uh, 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 online casino, but you know, for the games, let's say the entertainment games uh, to, be, to, be, to be licensed and approved in Germany. So what, what are the steps? Where should I go? If that's right now without the you know, super regulator that will um, take over, uh, later uh, next year. So what should I do? Well, that's, that's quite easy. You have to, of course, to apply for a license and you can do so. Uh, you could find first information uh, on the websites of those regulators. They published sort of guidelines. German word is Merkblatt, for instance, uh, and make yourself familiar with producing checklist bilingual. And uh, you can see the requirements, review these and see what you need to deliver, which is quite a lot. Typically, it's a, a couple of concepts and corporate uh, information, of course, and then uh, the, the typical documentation uh, of the individuals who are serving as officers or directors. And then you can submit that application either to Darmstadt for sports betting. As of 1st of January, it will be then the new body in Saxony Anhalt, or you apply for a virtual slot machine license. Uh, there's no time limitation um, with one interesting aspect that is important. This applies to an operator who is not actively serving customers in Germany. If you are um, running a business in Germany and you have your customers here, your players, um, then of course you will not be 
tolerated, you will be deemed illegal as an Ill operating illegally, and then be excluded from licensing regime because uh, the consequences, they regard you as non-reliable. Uh, unless those operators who started to adopt their offerings to uh, those current license conditions uh, under the so-called transitional regime beginning in October 2020, meaning fulfilling all these requirements which were um, uh, compiled in so-called joint guidelines. Uh, if this was 100% in compliance, you would be factually tolerated even until now, until you get that license, provided you're applying for a license and you submitted a request for, for a license, uh, then it's fine. Everybody else um, being on the market is regarded black market operator and illegal gaming uh, is a deal breaker. You will not get a license. At least that's the point of view of the, the regulator. But if you're a startup or you come from another country, probably doing business in Italy and now considering let's go to Germany, it's always possible. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. Um, I, I, have to, I have to double check the, the chat. So I think, yeah, I have a question here. Hi, uh, can you elaborate a bit uh, about, ah, the, 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 let's say the old ones, a bit about uh, Schleswig-Holstein decision to grant licenses even if interstate treaty is in force. So that's for your, I think. Yeah, well, well we cannot say they decided to grant licenses uh, in, a, in a parallel world to um, um, interstate treaty. The fact is they, grant, they, they granted licenses in 2012 and 2013 for all verticals online, casino games, apart from table games. These were excluded and, and online sports betting and uh, retail business. And these licenses, um, they were about to expire, they were then extended, and they are still valid until you get a new license uh, from the uh, nationwide regulator in Saxony or not. In that very second, the uh, schleswig holstein license will expire. It will also expire earlier if you do not apply in time. Uh, so there won't be two different licenses uh, when the new licenses will be granted. But up to that moment, uh, those license holders at schleswig holstein can use this license. And of course, you can only use it uh, in Schleswig-Holstein for residents of Schleswig-Holstein, people who live there. And uh, one of the advantages is you can advertise your product. That's the only casino games, casino type of casino games that can be advertised, which is TV uh, advertising, for instance, with that disclaimer, this only applies to Schleswig-Holstein, so it can create that brand awareness. Even now, being factually tolerated, advertising for games of chance without a license is still prohibited. And for the industry, it's important to notice this also applies to bonuses. Bonuses re is regarded as a part of advertising because you want to make playing attractive and generate more business and more, more traffic, more stakes. Uh, so it's, um, it's quite risky to offer bonuses for unlicensed games. You can do that for sports betting, but you cannot basically not allowed to do it for casino games. But if you look at the sites, you will see bonuses everywhere. So it's a little bit of um, a gray zone, some legal uncertainty maybe. Okay, understood. So thank you, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it was nice to, to, to have the first panel of, of today's conference. Uh, obviously we didn't cover everything because it's literally impossible <laughs> to do that. Uh, and we have, you know, two, two, two countries here. So, um, I think we will have um, a lot of opportunities this year, uh, both in, 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 in the Q meetings and, and in uh, hybrid conferences throughout the year. So uh, please, uh, you know, check up with, with Zoltan with, you know, where and when uh, are the, 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 the further conferences taking place. Thank you very much. And let's stay with this conference for uh, a few panels more. Thank you very much.